Hello there, what's going on everyone? Today I want to talk to you about an upgrade card for Star Wars Armada called Overload Pulse and why some people may not like it and some ways that I think you can put this card to use. If you guys are new here to the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button. Also leave a comment letting me know what you think of today's video. That'll automatically enter you to win the $25 Amazon gift card giveaway. Also, while you're here, check out some of the links I have down in the video description below. We've got links to the Discord server, which is a great community, very family friendly, where you can talk about Star Wars Armada and other Star Wars related games like Legion and X-Wing and even Star Wars Squadrons. We play video games on there sometimes too. Join the community. Click on the links down in the description below. We've got other links and social media links to help you support the channel if you're interested in those. All right, so let's talk about this card because actually we were having a discussion on Discord the other day. Some people were talking about Overload Pulse and there was kind of a little bit of a back and forth on uh, the merits or and the pitfalls of this card. Uh, it uses the Ion Cannon slot. It is an eight point upgrade. It's not super cheap. Uh, but it's uh, it's it's a decent card, right? And it exhausts all the defenders' defense tokens. Doesn't that sound great? Well, it's one of those cards that a lot of people got wrong when the game was brand new, because uh, the initial in uh, impression of this is a lot of first people, uh, you know, when they first start shooting this, is they say, "Oh, you know what? I'm going to hit you, and you can't spend any of your defense tokens." And unfortunately, that's not exactly the way that this card works. This is. A, a critical effect that you apply to your ship's attacks. Of course, it only is going to trigger off of blue critical results, which it's not usually too hard to get blue critical results. But this is a it needs to be kind of your first strike uh, because your defender can spend their defense tokens against this attack. The critical effect is not going to go into effect until after the defender has had an opportunity to spend defense tokens. And that really is the problem. If your defender is running some kind of damage control team or some, some way to stop critical effects, whether it's defense tokens that cancel critical results like the new and improved evade or any, any other way to basically stop this critical effect from happening, they're gonna be able to do that. And even if not, if this is a big enough attack, your opponent's probably going to brace or scatter or do whatever it else that they would have done anyway. And then once that attack is completely done, that's when this critical effect is, well, you know, at least once all the defense tokens are spent, that's when the critical effect is going to go through. So basically, whatever tokens they didn't spend will now also get exhausted. So, you know, basically at the end of this attack, everything's going to be orange on the defender. But the, the real problem here is they had an opportunity to spend everything. Anything that was good enough and worth spending they were going to spend anyway, whether they had the new salvo, which means they're going to shoot you back or, or, you know, fancier tokens like brace and, 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 you know, evade and, and, and all the other defense tokens that are out there. And even, heck, even future defense tokens, maybe we'll get new ones someday. Now, this can potentially combo with certain things that certain up, other upgrade cards that might restrict your opponent from only spending one defense token or, or other things like that. And so there's, there's ways to kind of, you know, combo this into other effects. But the other problem uh, with this particular upgrade card is that it's in kind of a, a, a tight competition slot. The Ion Cannon upgrade slot is has got some other stiff competition, as well as the fact that Overload Pulse sort of tells your opponent what you're going to be doing and in this case overload pulse it, first off since it's a blue crit it, it requires that you have a ship in medium range that usually means that's a ship that's going to be um you know on the receiving end of some serious firepower so this would if you're trying to use this it's probably going to be a little bit easier if you're a first player but that also kind of tells your opponent, all right, well, the ship with Overload Pulse is going to be his first ship to activate. So it allows them to kind of plan around that um, and, and kind of know your strategy a little bit. So if you're playing very strategic games against a, uh, a tough opponent, uh, a card like Overload Pulse uh, could, could be used to bluff. But more often than not, it's going to tell your opponent, it's going to broadcast your strategy a little bit. And that's one of the criticisms for Overload Pulse. Another one is some of the other really great cards. Uh, I'm going to talk about two of them that are competition for Overload Pulse. And the first one is Leading Shots. Leading Shots is one of the most common 
cards for uh, for the Ion Cannon slot because it's so very useful and is not as restrictive. It doesn't matter when you fire with a ship that has leading shots. Uh, as long as you happen to have a blue die in there, uh, you're going to be able to reroll everything if you need to and whatever you want. So leading shots is a very, very good card. So good, in fact, that in the 1.5 update, leading shots actually got nerfed in that it got a points increase. So that tells you just how good leading shots is. It's, uh, it had to go up in value because it was seeing so much play. And it's just a universally good card. Uh, just about every ship in the game needs rerolls. And the really big ships need a lot of rerolls. And leading shot does it at a very small cost of just a single blue die. Uh, and of course, if you only have one blank, you might not want to spend it. But usually, with enough dice in your dice uh, pool, you're going to have possibly more than one unsatisfactory die result and if you get like four blank reds you're gonna be thanking uh thanking your decision making for giving you leading shots and so that's a tough sell versus something like overload pulse um another one and one of my favorites is heavy ion emplacements uh this is a a, a critical effect and it's also very expensive that does so much damage uh it's an exhaustible and it's a an exhaustible crit so this is only going to work once one out of one of your two attacks or three if you're a superstar destroyer. Uh, but uh, this one is not only going to do uh, an extra shield damage to the defending side, but also a shield damage to the two defending sides adjacent to the defending side. So this is like three extra damage from a single blue crit. Uh, now, of course, this is mitigated by the fact that once those shields are all gone, then this crit won't do anything. But that's a good problem to have because if the shields are all gone, that that means that ship is probably very close to dying. Um, it's also important to know that these shields come off before regular damage goes through. So if you had, um, you know, eight damage and then this crit goes in, you're actually looking at like eleven total. It's just it's beautiful. It's really really beautiful. Um, and so uh, this is a very, very threatening card. And, uh, and, and there, there's other crits out there that are other blue cards, uh, ion uh, cannon upgrades that have plenty of value. But uh, a lot of folks are not super fond of Overload Pulse. Um, initially, you know, like I said, when people started getting into the game, they thought, hey, uh, I can shoot you. you, you all, it automatically exhausts all your defense tokens. So the way that this kind of works now is you're, you know, you put this on something like a CR-90B, they fly in ahead and, you know, shoot somebody and... Um, if that's your first ship to attack, boom, you know, they get to defend and you then bring down all the defense tokens and then everybody else goes after them. And in a dream situation, maybe that can work, but it's a little harder to do because um, ideally you want this on a smaller ship that's doesn't, that's not kind of wasting a, a potential really big dice pool that it needs leading shots for, right? You want this to be somebody that you can afford to have this kind of sacrifice play for that first shot that wasn't going to do a whole lot of damage anyway, so you don't care if they brace, you know, and that's kind of where it goes. So I'm going to present to you a build option for a Imperial Raider. So let's take a look at this Raider Corvette, uh, and this is a Raider 2 Corvette, which has a little bit of blue dice, right? And we put a couple of different upgrades on here, and I'll talk about all of those, but a Raider Corvette is a good option for the Empire because it is a smaller ship. It doesn't have a tremendously huge dice pool, but you can point it right at the target. It has three blue in that front arc. If you give it disposable capacitors, like we've got up there, you're going to be able to extend that blue range to long range. So on that first shooting turn, which might be round two or might be round three of the game, you're not going to get long range shots with your blue dice, which is going to give you a lot better chance of making this work, which is going to be awesome. Um, by then, hopefully you've also triggered a concentrate fire command in your uh, on your command dial, because then you will also be able to use gunnery team, which is going to be, and I know this is going to become a very expensive Raider 2 Corvette, but there's okay, there's a reason for that. Because we want this one to be able to use overloaded pulse on multiple ships, right? Um, so, and of course, you don't have to do all this. I think overload pulse and disposable capacitors is, is good enough. You could stop there. But gunnery team, if you've done concentrate fire, because maybe you want an extra blue die, um, you know, more chance to get that crit, or, or even there's just more damage. I mean, damage is always great. Uh, but it also lets you take a second shot. And if you've popped disposable capacitors, you've got that long range. So then take your second shot with gunnery teams. And that, you know, and that one could potentially roll a crit also. And now you've got overload pulse on that one. Because 
Overload Pulse is one good thing that it has going for it. You know, over the, you know over something like heavy ion emplacements is that it's not as an exhaustible crit effect. So Overload Pulse can trigger off of every attack you make. When in the case of most chips in the game, that's only going to be two. All right. Well, I should say every normal attack. It can't trigger off of a salvo attack, which the raider doesn't have a salvo natively anyway. But uh, but that would be kind of cool if it could, wouldn't it? Um, uh, for the title, I gave this one the Corvus because maybe I want this one pointing right at the enemy flagship, and I want to make sure that uh, the enemy flagship doesn't outmaneuver me, so I can drop this guy early off, stall, you know, and then be like, oh, is that what your flagship is? Okay, good, now I know, boom, and then drop him there. I think Corvus works pretty well for this setup, but I've neglected to talk about this guy right here, Emperor Palpatine. Why would I put Emperor Palpatine on this ship? Well, you might disagree with this, and you're perfectly fine if you disagree. The reason I have Palpatine on this ship is because... I want this ship to possibly survive and then be able to shoot again next turn. And uh, if I'm going, if I'm sending this ship after enemy flagships, like, you know, like a Starhawk or a, or a Super Star Destroyer or something like that, um, you know, if I'm going to lose it, I want it to come at even more of a cost, you know, and then and, and that's kind of the idea here. So the, uh, the beauty here is that after I've fired, and if I, especially if I end up being first player, after I fired, and hopefully brought down, if everything went well, brought down like the two biggest threat ships, you know, maybe an, an ISD and a Victory Star Destroyer or something to that effect. If I have fired and brought down both of their, all of their defense tokens, you know, fingers crossed, um, then I, I have to fly forward because I'm pointed at them, which is going to probably put me in, in range of being shot at at least medium range, probably. Well, if they're going to fire at me, I want them to have to spend a defense token. Uh, and since now all of their defense tokens are orange, uh, Palpatine means they have to lose a defense token to fire at me. So that makes it, like, adds insult to injury. Now, um, Palpatine might work better on a flagship in a lot of cases, and of course that makes sense. But here, you know, I, I really forced my opponent to make some tough decisions. And I think that would be really fun, too, because sometimes uh, a fun difficult choice that you put on your opponent in the middle of a game um, might be worth it not being the best tactical decision. So I hope you at least understand the method to my madness. There's certainly other cards like uh, Brunson or, uh, or, 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 oh gosh, Inferno Squad, um, Iden Versio, that might work better on a Raider here. But I like the idea of Palpatine because if everything works well, I feel like he really synergizes with what the build is trying to do. So let's let's move forward a little bit because I'll talk about the rest of this build because if I want I want everybody to be able to shoot on the ship or ships if I if it went well you know I, I want everybody to be able to shoot on the same targets that this raider had which in this case means I'm probably going to focus a little bit more on red dice if I want everybody to be able to bring their guns to bear because if I'm doing all black dice I'm probably only going to have one ship that managed to get into the sweet spot at the same time right so it's going to be a whole lot easier to make this work if I've got a whole bunch of red dice ships. So uh, one way to get a lot of red dice is, well, to run three Architons. I've got three Architons over here, which are, are fun. And no upgrades on those. Um, and then uh, we have a Simon, which again, my favorite Star Destroyer is the Simon. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know I love red dice for Star Wars Armada. I love the Simons. Um, and I'm running General Ramadi because this is he's also going to factor into the Raider in case it happens to be an obstructed shot. I get to add even more dice, so I'm not losing a blue die on my attempts to do the crazy, crazy stuff, which is just it's just perfect. Like it really like all of this starts to come together there. Um, but the Simon is going to already have five red out the front if I'm at if I happen to be at long range. Now, granted, if I'm if I happen to be closer than long range, if I'm up to medium, then even better than I got, you know, some blue dice too. But I've got Krennic there, and I've got Intensify Firepower because hopefully I've, I've stockpiled, a, a, you know, a defense token a little bit. So when, on that big firing turn, all the Architons are going to be able to take advantage of Intensify Firepower. So is the Simon. I've got Gunnery Team here on the on the flagship as well, so we can make that big six because we got spinal armament so at least six red dice seven on the first shot because we're kind of probably going to run concentrate fire with krennic seven red dice against somebody who all their defense tokens are already spent um that's going to be something I mean, that's amazing um 
<clears throat> it's just I, I think it's going to be beautiful. Uh, so and then uh, so seven red dice, then six red dice. Uh, going to be beautiful. Intensify firepower will work for both. The second shot will uh, admittedly be weaker. We won't have all the rerolls that Krennic will grant us. Um, so uh, so you know the second shot's going to be weaker, but we still have intensify firepower. Um, now. These Architons here, they have no upgrades on them. Uh, we've got five points to spare in this build, so there's certainly things you could do. You could drop Palpatine and maybe put a TRC, uh, or rather our, our LTT on, on the Simoon or something like that, or put some officers out, out there and put drop Vader on one of the Architons and you know, more rerolls and things like that. All of that stuff is possible, but if we want the bid for first player, maybe we just leave it at, at, you know, at, at 395. Leave that five point bid. So, so this is just kind of one way I thought of maybe running something like Overload Pulse uh, in a way that I think it's easier to broadcast your intentions when you're able to do uh, that that Alpha Strike with your entire fleet at long range, and uh, you know, and because you're not in as much danger, uh, the Raider can certainly survive being uh, bombarded at long range, even if you're not first player, because now Evade is better. Uh, so that much is great. Um, you're, you're, you've also got the brace. So, you know, how many dice are they really going to roll at you? Even if something like my Simon here throwing seven dice at you with some rerolls, you know, I, you know you're going to be able to cancel two doubles if you need to. That's going to take, you know, four of that down and then brace the rest. Plus, you know, so then two shields and four hull. I, I, it's... It's, unlike, it's unlikely you'll get one shot at long range in a raider right now, uh, as long as it's by you know a ship that's larger than you and small ships ain't gonna throw that many dice at long range. So uh, yeah, so I think it's a fun build. I'd love to hear from you guys though. Let me know what you think down in the description below. What do you think of Overload Pulse? Do you think it's something that's just situational, or do you think you could apply it to a little bit more builds now? after we've talked about it. Um, if you want to talk more about Overload Pulse, jump in my Discord. Uh, we have Armada channels down there. It's a great opportunity to talk with other people who love the game and want to talk about upgrades like this and other upgrades and other build ideas and all kinds of fun stuff like that. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons as well. You guys are super amazing. You guys help make this channel possible. So thank you for your continued support. I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. And as always, have a great day.